gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to the 2021 uh, Connected Fleets Conference. Good afternoon, sir. How are you doing, Stuart? Very well, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Great conference, great to see you. Thank you. Thank you for the support and also you, Ivan. Welcome. Welcome to the conference. I hope that you are doing well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything okay. Thanks, Stephen. Pleasure being here with you and Stuart in, in this panel. I'm, I'm missing doing this in person and the networking and the beers, yes. but better times will come for sure. Thanks for having me here. Okay. Uh, Ivan, to start with you, uh, I think that you are working with Google. So the previous presentation probably is not really a strange thing to you. Um, what do you think about the importance and essence of AI and machine learning for connected solutions? So <clears throat> I would say that it's really crucial to have uh, good uh, data quality. So Camille mentioned that. It's important to have data reliable from uh, good sources and then do smart things uh, on top of that. No? If the data is not good, the, the insight from that uh, data will not be good uh, neither. Um, once we have the right data, we offer some big data services. No? So for example, uh, we help benchmarking uh, companies with others in the same industry so they can understand if they are doing better or worse uh, with, uh, with their peers. Um, we can also detect uh, where are the dangerous intersections, no? that this is critical information for, for smart uh, cities. And as Camille mentioned, the artificial intelligence and machine learning te technologies will play a significant role here. No? And uh, just, just to mention some examples that we are currently doing with Google technology in uh, Geotab, uh, our product gives an indication of the batteries that can fail in the short term based on machine learning algorithms. And we are also working on models to detect uh, minor damage uh, in a car. Okay. Um, Stuart, yeah. uh, the baseline of this conference is connectivity as the main driver for fleet efficiencies and cost savings. Why for you and for Sixth can connectivity be a main driver for fleet management efficiency? Mm, yeah, great, great question. I mean, I think for, for Sixth um, and our customers, it's um, the key is to match vehicles with users to match demand with supply. Yeah, um, and uh, you know, as we heard the, this morning from the uh, the discussion with. Um, with Vincent Splantz uh, and the colleague um, Daniel from, from Amazon, um, th this supports improving the customer experience and benefits obviously from that are increasing, ut increasing the utilization of the assets and reducing the cost. And that goes in both directions, both um, from our side as a supplier uh, of services, but also I think um, critically for, um, for, for the customer. So, um, you know, I think we're still very much at the uh, the early stage of um, of adoption for many organisations, especially in the fleet world. Um, but but I you know I, I def definitely see that um, uh, that that connectivity do does drive fleet efficiencies and cost savings. Mm -hmm. uh, Ivan, uh, we have a little bit more than three hundred people that registered for the conference today. Do you think that there is indeed still, let's say, a lack of implementation of connected solutions and telematics in fleets. And how can we as an industry be serving those customers better in a way that they get convinced to turn to telematics and connectivity? Mm. Well, I think these kind of conferences uh, really help evangelizing the benefits of the telematics because I think there are still many companies that do not understand all the potential that we can get uh, from there. No? And I would definitely recommend not only 
investigating a bit more on telematics, but also doing pilots and quantify the benefits. No? There are many areas that the good telematics product can, can optimize. No? Accident reduction, uh, fuel cost improvement, uh, increased productivity, and telematics applied to different industries and customers have uh, different ROIs as well. No? So, for example, in last mile uh, delivery, um, companies can save money by improving routing or reducing the fuel consumption while um, while a rent -a car company can uh, optimize uh, their cost by detecting accidents in real time and automating the collection of uh, of mileage and fuel usage by by, by customers hmm. we do see a trend where uh, customers want to invest um, in technology but they want to calculate better the return of investment, no? especially in the last quarter of uh, 2020 and this month uh, of 2021, we see we see that trend. No? They want to digitalize fleet processes, but they need to understand better uh, the business case. And the best way for this is to test the technology for the specific use cases and, and qualify and quantify the benefits. Mm. Uh, Stuart, um, what is sixth USP when it comes to unlocking efficiency via connectivity. Uh, you are well known, you were well known as a car rental company, but you are much more. We have seen that today in the conference. You have also many solutions in mobility, in flexibility. So what is for you the main USP? You, you highlighted some of them <clears throat> just there, Stephen, and, and when you mentioned um, unlocking i uh, i thought he's he's got he's got a line coming out here um because uh, i mean there there is in fact a, a whole host of um of, of of usps if you like for our company um which, which is is solved by connectivity um you know the uh, you may have seen in the introduction video to um, to to this conference that um, you know, I, I sent across to you guys um, that, you know, digitalization and connectivity are at the forefront of all of the mobility solutions that um, that we've created uh, and, and we offer. You know, if we think about some of them, uh, Fastlane is um, the, the counter bypass topic, which uh, streamlines the, the process, enables people to remotely access and, and locate a, a vehicle, go straight to the, the car park, um, our share business. Uh, you know, where we have tens of thousands of vehicles across the streets of uh, Germany, the Netherlands, um, which basically, um, you know, that business, uh, it, it provides basically car and micro mobility in an app, um, which is adjacent to your current location. It wouldn't be possible without that connectivity. So all of our vehicles, uh, assets, whether it be their car, a van, a, a, a scooter, um, they're all connected to the cloud. Um, digital branches that, that double up to support corporate car, van, pooling, sharing. Uh, you know, we can place vehicles in, in locations geographically to support our customers where we don't have branches. Um, we can make vehicles available to, to a group of people that then are able to access those vehicles fully digitally. Um, you know, the, the last mile industry, you know, if you think about those businesses, you know, they don't have um, a fleet of vehicles that covers their every eventuality. Uh, so during, you know, high season, uh, Christmas, um, uh, Black Friday, um, <laughs> COVID full stop, you know, obviously that they, they uh, you know, they then um, are able to, to rent those vehicles in from us. And we're able to provide those services digitally. And then when mm. the peak reduces, it drops again. Um, our ride business, you know, basically uh, providing uh, for, for people booking taxis, it provides real time updates on, on location for your driver. So it's it's really a fundament to uh, to the success of, of, of our business and how we've been able to develop. OK, also the same question for you, Ivan. Uh, in the meantime, there are also some questions from the audience popping in. So I will also read them and then see um, what is interesting to ask you, the panel members. So to the audience, if you have questions for Stuart and Ivan, please use the chat function. Ivan, uh, Geotap, I think that you have now 
more than 2 million vehicles connected across the globe. Um, so you are um, a true global player, a specialist in connected solutions. What is your USP? Because of course you are not the only connectivity specialist. Absolutely. Uh, yes, and we have been helping fleets from uh, many sites improving their efficiency. We have over 44,000 customers uh, around the globe. And basically, we provide data to our customers to help improve in efficiency, but also productivity, safety, and sustainability. Um, our strengths are definitely on the engineering side. We have uh, the most complete uh, engine data set uh, from all the make and models from the different OEMs. We have over 700 engineers fully dedicated to product uh, design and, and development. And to be more specific, as uh, my colleague uh, David mentioned during his presentation, we have a unique value proposition around, uh, around EV. We are supporting fleets in the entire um, electrification journey. So first we analyze their current <coughs> fleet um, and guide them on how they can replace their internal combustion engine vehicles with EVs considering uh, the journeys, but the TCOs, and proposing some specific EV models, so not just a generic recommendation to move uh, into, into EV. Then we provide a specific EV data, like um, mm -hmm. a state of charge, energy consumption, uh, and we are currently supporting over 130 uh, 30 models. Um, I think, worth mentioning as well our keyless product we we have been hearing during the different sessions how important is during this period the contact list and uh, last year we launched uh, our keyless proposition that is basically a platform with uh, a hardware component that allow uh, drivers to open and close the doors of the vehicles with uh, with um, a smartphone and work with every single uh, make and model from, from all the brands. Okay, thank you. Uh, Stuart, what is smart data for you? Mm, well, I think smart data as a, as a general topic uh, is, is Ivan's speciality more so, but I think <laughs> for, um, for, for us, I, I think the best example, um, you know, to put it into layman terms is, um, you know, is is pulling all the different data sources that we receive from the, the 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 vehicles that are connected through the cloud which then enables us to be able to steer that information into uh you know into the the ui the user interface so the sixth app um to for example um show the nearest vehicle location to meet the uh, the demand so where you're located you, you, you then uh, are seeing, uh, you know, the, the, the vehicle, the services, where you don't, you, you won't. Um, it, using AI is another you know, great example, um, which, which is a, uh, you know, is a first for us in our business. And I think also an industry first in terms of um, our specific car rental industry um, is using AI uh, in, our, uh, in our pricing mechanism um you know if i take our share business we we have as i said tens of thousands of vehicles um that are operating in a free float network um on on the streets of germany the netherlands cars vans uh in in different locations if we want to stimulate um moving those vehicles to uh, areas where there is greater demand then effectively that data helps us to be able then to effectively um, stimulate an increase in, in demand by lowering prices in areas where there's not high demand uh, and those vehicles are then being moved uh, to, to areas where there's high demand. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's pulling all of those data sources together to help us to, uh, to, to provide our customers with better access to our, uh, to our services. Okay, uh, Ivan, uh, people are saying, we are saying that data is the new gold, but isn't data, isn't that raw data, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's about how you handle that data. 
the insights, the value that you can create with data. Do you agree? Ab absolutely. And uh, yes, it's true that we typically hear that data is gold, uh, or even we also hear that it's like uh, fuel, but I would say it's, it's not true. So fuel can be only used uh, once, while data, the more it's being used with a purpose, the better for uh, the companies and society. No? So in that regard, we think data more as education. Uh, this is something that can be used and shared by many different uh, companies, uh, organizations, uh, public administrations, uh, etc. Et um, so, for just 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 to mention an example, during the the pandemic, we released uh, a, a recovery dashboard with, uh, of course, aggregated and anonymized data that help uh, to understand the mobility patterns during the pandemic. No, so uh, what is the percentage of the different vehicles moving? Uh, in the different uh, countries, including the borders. No? And this was a very useful metric to understand the impact of the situation in the different uh, countries and, and, and in the different borders. Hmm. Um, a question that came in um, is about good data, good data quality. I think you, Ivan, you mentioned that in your first answer um, in this panel discussion, you talked about quality data, data quality. Now, the question is how can OEMs and also other suppliers deliver this quality? And even more interesting, at what cost? How do you see that mm. at Geotap? Good question, good question. and. Uh... Yes, we see a trend, no? And OEMs are and more and more providing connectivity through factory fitted uh, devices. We believe this is an opportunity for uh, for the industry, not a threat. And we all know that installing aftermarket devices in vehicles um, is not uh, is not ideal for our customers. So if we can avoid this and get directly the data from the manufacturers, this is this is a win win uh, scenario, no? And the challenge here. Yes, is that in some cases we don't get good quality from uh, from some OEMs. And as Mark uh, Levesque commented uh, this morning, 90% of the fleets are uh, multi-brand. So customers still need to use uh, platforms that can gather data from aftermarket devices, mm -hmm. but also directly with uh, with OEMs. We, we believe uh, this is the path. We have already integrated with several OEMs, with PSA, with Mercedes, with uh, GM, Ford, uh, and, and, and we are already working uh, with the rest, and, uh, and, and we will be announcing that soon. So for us, the device um, is an asset, uh, not the goal. And the goal should be provide meaningful insights through, through data to our customers so they can improve the, the operations of the fleet. Okay, Stuart, do you have something to add? No, I think I think that's um, <clears throat> that uh, it, it comes from the expo, Ivan. I think um, the, um, the, the the long uh, long ago in this industry, you know, the the focus was on the, on the hardware, uh, and uh, the the critical uh, topic is not what is the hardware, but but what is the information that's coming out, and whoever puts that hardware in, you know, I mean, we at Sixth, we. We have our we developed our own uh, you know in, independent OEM uh, independent uh, black box. Uh, I, I think it's it's less any more about the um, the the box and and it's about the middleware if you like uh, speaking Evans language uh, in in terms of how to decode that information and and and, and turn it into something that's meaningful. Uh, but I, I almost sound like I, I know what I'm talking about when I mention that. That's um that's Evans uh, you know that's how he can be angelical right. Okay, um, another question that popped in, and I think that uh, uh, for sure Geotab, but also Sixth has experiences with that technology, is the keyless technology. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the remark is uh, keyless tech is definitely the way most OEMs are moving into. 
for uh, different businesses like car club businesses that need to keep the keys in the vehicle but lock on lock vehicles using an app etc how do you bypass the oem's built-in safety function that keeps vehicles unlocked when the keys are left inside and do you partner with each of your oem partners to bypass this function and make it easy accessible for your customers perhaps even to go first yeah yeah so as i mentioned before we launched our keyless technology last uh, year and uh, the way we build it is that we use an oem uh, key we use the electronics of the key in uh, the keyless uh, hardware that we install uh, seamlessly in, uh, in, 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 in all the vehicles. And then we provide the platform, the APIs, the cryptographic libraries to connect between uh, the application of the user with uh, our unit installing the car and with our keyless uh, accessory. We don't provide the application itself. We think that companies like Sixth uh, should be much better uh, positioned to provide this uh, and they can differentiate themselves by providing a good product and a good uh, user, user experience there. Okay, Stuart? Yeah, I mean, I, I would go along with that. Effectively, the way in which it works is that the, the key uh, obviously, there are some cars where you don't need a key, but the key sits in the glove compartment and um, in the sharing uh, approach. Um, and uh, and effectively, then the, um, the the app is able to open the, uh, the the vehicle, close the vehicle. If the um, if the uh, if the key is not inside, it won't allow you to lock. So uh, you know, if if for example, you get out the car and you uh, you forget um and you've got the key in your pocket it won't let you close the car therefore it won't and allow you to um to finish the uh the share which will soon uh, make you realize that oh, actually i need to put the uh the key back so yeah okay um a final question regarding that keyless tech for ivan um how do you make sure that the oem warranty is still valid after the installation of this hardware unit this one is easy because we don't break anything in the car. So okay. our technology uh, is the geotab device that is connected to the OBD port through a harness and that and then we connect our EOX keyless to our device. So we avoid any harsh installation in the car that, uh, that in some cases uh, could harm the, the vehicle. We, we, we don't uh, harm in, in any way. Okay. Um, question again for you, Ivan. What's your answer to corporate fleet customers, and there are a few, that have doubts about return on investment of telematic services? So, yes, uh, and I think it's linked to a previous question from you, Stephen. I think uh, the best way is to quantify the benefits, to do a pilot, to install some telematics unit in uh, the vehicles of the customer, define uh, in a very detailed way the use cases that uh, that they want to uh, they, they want to validate and uh, do the numbers so quantify the benefits so telematics <laughs> is not a cost it's an investment and it will basically save a lot of money uh, and save lives on the safety aspect for uh, most uh, most of the most of the companies the important thing is as, as I mentioned before that different companies have uh, different priorities different use cases and uh, in in order to qualify that uh, the pilot the pilot phase is critical mm -hmm. uh Stuart, um when we think about the latest services and solutions of sixth we think about flexibility and seamless mobility we know of course that many fleets are asking for flexibility for sure also in times like these where you never know what will happen tomorrow now doesn't come flexibility and you offer flexibility with your services doesn't that come with more complexity and how do you help your customers in managing the complexity by giving them 
more flexibility. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a, a ge German expression, "Yang," um, which means yes and no. Uh, you know, and and so when you uh, when you ask the question, uh, doesn't more flexibility come with more complexity? Complexity. I mean, obviously, naturally, it does. Um, you know, uh, especially if we think about you know most corporates, um, different fleets. You know, uh, maybe a, have a mix of, of car, van, fleets, um, but predominantly they're sourcing their vehicles through one channel. Um, so, uh, you know, by then effectively then embracing flexibility with six, you already create more uh, complexity because you're then adding another supplier into the mix. Uh, whereas for many organizations, they've obviously tried to, 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 to streamline and, and move away uh, from having multiple suppliers. Um, I think ultimately um, we're uh, faced with the fact that there is a lot of change coming. We've already um, had to deal with a whole lot of change uh, the last 12 months. Um, and I think most of us have embraced that extremely well. Uh, but th there's a lot more change coming. Digitalization and connectivity is 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 only part of it, um, you know. Connectivity is is a um, uh, is is a key weapon that helps us basically to enable us to navigate the future. Um, and uh, I mean, at Sixth, we we help our customers across a whole array uh, in terms of analysing data, um, looking at uh, you know changing policies, um, looking at uh, utilisation levels, and how we can help them. To, to increase that from an operational standpoint, um, you know, uh, b building business cases uh, for change, uh, creating, you know, what, what is the value proposition? What is the return on investment, uh, you know, by, by, by making changes? So, yeah, I think uh, it's about picking a partner to help you to simplify that complexity. There's lots of ways we can do that. And hopefully, again, that will be evident that, uh, you know, one of the world's largest companies, um, was uh, was on the stage this morning with with Vincent's, uh, you know, um, in in part adv advocating that, uh, you know, by joining us in in, in that uh, in that speech. Okay, um, Ivan, um, what's your answer to corporate fleet customers that want to go zero emission but say that that they don't have the right offering in terms of cars, that they don't have mm -hmm. the right solutions? to do their driver profiling, to manage everything in terms of charging infrastructure. It's way too complex to switch today to electric mobility. What's your answer to them? Hmm. That, that's, that's, a, that's a good question. And we all know the headlines now that by 2030, at least 30 million zero emission cars will be in operation on, on European uh, roads. But it's true that we talk to many fleet managers and, and they are a bit lost no, at this moment. Um, in fact, we did a survey in different uh, countries to understand this better. And the conclusions were, uh, were that uh, for 60% of them, electrification is a key topic in their mobility strategies uh, uh, in the next uh, five years. But they don't know how to do it. No? We, we learned that the most challenging points are... Um, um, autonomy, uh, total cost of ownership, of ownership, and uh, and charging infrastructure. In terms of vehicle autonomy, so battery prices dropped uh, ninety percent in the last ten years. No, and OEMs are launching more and more uh, EV and plug-in hybrid models every year. D Dieter mentioned uh, today that we expect over 300 uh, EVs on 2022. And governments are funding and providing subsidies for both uh, EVs and, 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 and charging points. In some cases, we see that fleets try to move all their vehicles to EV at the same time. And, and we think this is a mistake. No? They need to do an analysis based on data on which vehicles, according to their use, uh, mileage, and total cost of ownership, can 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 move uh, uh, to electric. So e electrification is a journey, not not something that that you do just uh, just once. Mm -hmm. Stuart, yeah, if if I may just add to that, because I, I think that's um, you know that that's um, 
the, the big challenge for everyone I, I speak to right now, everybody is, is talking about moving to electrification, but ultimately, surely we should be focused more uh, on, on the topic of um, not of, of moving to electrification per se, but uh, as, as is documented very nicely in your latest magazine that everyone should read. Um, is uh, is the steps on the road to CO2 neutrality because you know I think electrification is just one part of that yeah mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know as 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 Ivan just highlighted there I mean everything is changing daily yeah um, infrastructure taxes vehicle options uh, in fact I just took a hybrid vehicle yesterday for the first time and I'm going to um, drive it and uh, be sure to put uh, you know many of my ex share many of my experiences on LinkedIn about it. Uh, I think people need to give um, themselves the maximum option available to them by giving the, themselves um, flexibility. We mentioned the word earlier. So, mm -hmm. you know, in, in times of change, we need to really limit as many fixed cost investments as possible right now. Uh, and, you know, we're obviously, you know, you've heard it a few times today, helping our customers with that, with mobility subscriptions like 6 Plus, like Flex. Uh, but um, yeah, there's there's a lot of change around the corner, and we uh, you know we need to embrace it, but we also need need to not be so blinkered in thinking that it's um, you know we must all go for electrification. Okay, um, a final topic um, that I would like to tackle with you um, first, Ivan. Where do you see the place of connectivity and telematics in the future of mobility? So I believe connectivity is a, a building block for, uh, for new services and innovation. So mm -hmm. it's not only the main driver, it's, it's, it's a piece that is, I would say, mandatory if you want to, to deploy new services around, uh, around mobility. Um, I think there is consen consensus around where mobility is going now. So it will be connected, shared, uh, electric uh, and uh, an intermodal no in in the sense that uh, users will be uh, utilizing different transportation means but beyond this consensus it's it's important the adoption of those trends and those and those technologies um, machine learning as as uh, we saw earlier will play a crucial role um, and customers will demand uh, to see not only what is happening with their vehicles in real time, but to predict somehow what will happen with their vehicles. They want to understand which component will uh, fail according to the statistics from that specific model, or uh, which uh, drivers have more risk of having an accident based on, on, on their driving profile. So again, connectivity is an enabler for all the mm -hmm. products and, 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 and services. Um, Stuart, um, you are Stuart Mobility, Donnelly. So uh, how do you see connectivity play a role in the future of mobility? Yeah, I, I, not much more I can say than what Ivan has said already. I, I think it's the enabler to all mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, I, I made the point earlier about when you asked the question about the, the six USPs and uh, you know, I, I talked about a range of things that we do, which are all supported by digitalization, by connectivity. W without it, it won't work. So uh, I think, it, you know, the simple answer is it's an integral part of everything. And, you know, whether you choose for, you know, I think people need to get over the simple point about co connected doesn't mean telematics in isolation. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that there's, there's many stigmas about these things. And um, I mentioned it to a colleague earlier about, uh, you know, telematics. And he said, oh, It'll never catch on uh, because coming from a German background, you know, it's about data privacy. Um, I'm sure the colleague is laughing now as I mention it. Um, <clears throat> you know, connectivity drives everything. It's the enabler and, uh, you know, it, it will be this, the forefront of, of change. So Okay. So uh, what I uh, understand is that we should also embrace that new technology and uh, that probably could mean that the fleet manager will evolve to the fleet data manager, the mobility manager to the, mobili to the mobility data manager and the logistics manager to the logistics data manager uh, by using and embracing data and connected solutions. Thank you very much to our founding partners, Stuart Donnelly from Sixth, Ivan Liquerica from Geotap. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we hope to meet with you in a 
upcoming conference of Fleet Europe. Thank you. Very much.